In the last video, we found out that the sense switches on the Bajuta well, they don't work. But in this video, we're going to show you what you do when something don't work. Come on, human man, show them. No, human man, you don't buy a load of super strength lager. Try again, human man. No, you don't blame 5G. Try again. That's right, human man. You get over yourself and you figure out why it don't work. Step one is probably the easiest of them all. Basically, you just look at everything, make sure everything's soldered, make sure everything's plugged in properly, make sure everything's the right way round. And if you're lucky, well, this solved your problem. Uh, that wasn't what happened with us, though. Now, obviously, me and the human man are in no position to be telling you what you should or shouldn't do. Because, well, we don't know nothing about electronics. We're a couple of failed physicists in a shed. So, we're not going to make a list of things you should or shouldn't do. We'll just show you what we did. In the last video, we concluded that our problem was this buffer here doesn't go high impedance during a sense switch read. These are the control signals that go from the front panel to the CPU card. And this one here, data enable, that's the one we're interested in. That's the one that controls the output of this buffer. We explained this circuit in the last video. So you don't really want me to explain it again. All we need to look at is this output here. And we need this output to somehow control the data enable line. Or in other words, when we get a zero here, we want a one here. Now it would be nice if we didn't have to blue tack an extra chip on the back of the board. So let's have a look at what unused gates we got left on the board. So we got two inverters and two OR gates. What can we make with these? We got this circuit here. Let's start by adding the data enable line in here. Now, let's cut it because we're going to need to interrupt this signal. Next, let's add one of the spare OR gates we've got. So here we go. We've got the data enable line on the left hand side going into one of the inputs of the OR gate and the data enable line on the right hand side coming out of the output of the OR gate. So, what happens when we put a zero on the other input of the OR gate? Well, the data enable signal on the right hand side just follows whatever the data enable signal on the left hand side is doing. So, if we have a zero on the left hand side, we get a zero on the right hand side. And if we have a one on the left hand side, we get a one on the right hand side. So, what happens when we put a one on the spare input of the OR gate? Well, we get a one on the output of the OR gate. And it doesn't matter what we do to the data enable signal on the left hand side, the data enable signal on the right hand side will always be a one. Now, let's bung one of the spare inverters in the circuit. So, what does the circuit do? Well, when the sense switches are inactive, we have a 1 on this side of the inverter, which gives us a 0 on this side of the inverter. And as before, the data enable signal on the right hand side matches the data enable signal on the left hand side. And when the sense switches become active, we get a 0 on this side of the inverter and a 1 on this side of the inverter. Which, as we saw before, gives us a 1 on the right hand side of the data enable line and it doesn't matter what the left hand side does. Okay, so we know what circuit we need to make. Now comes a scary bit. The human man is gonna cut some tracks. Oh no, human man. 
You need to desolder the chip first. Look, the tracks we need to cut, they're underneath it. Go on, human man, do some desoldering. Yeah, that one there, desolder that one. Whoa, well, hang on, human man. You ain't taking the chip out yet. Get your blocks of wood, human man. There you go. You need your little sucky thing, don't you? That's not working very well, is it, human man? Try bugging a load of flux on it, human man. Well, that's dried up where you've kept it in the shed, isn't it? Eventually, the human man gave up trying to use the little solder sucky thing and then, well, he just chopped up the chip socket with a pair of wire cutters and desoldered each bit individually. And uh, as you can see, the human man has made a bit of a mess of it. But anyway, these are the tracks the human man needs to cut. It's times like this, I'm really glad the human man isn't a surgeon. Go on, human man. Show them the other track we're going to cut. While you're on some sort of roll, I suppose you better cut the data enable line next, human man. So, that human man, he's only gone and cut all the tracks we need to cut. The track for the data enable pin we stripped off the solder mask to leave the bare copper because we're going to solder the wire to that. What's the wire we're using, human man? Well, this is going to take an age, so let's just skip to the end. There we go, all our happy little wires soldered in place. Now all the human man has to do is put it all together and test it. Come on, human man! Press run! Now, have a look at address 128. Ooh! The same pattern that's on the switches is in that address. Now, let's try something that isn't all zeros. Try that alternating pattern like we did before, human man. Now run! Whoa, look at that! It's only working! Just to make sure, do half zeros and half ones. Look at that! Almost looks like we know what we're doing, doesn't it, human man? I think that human man, he's well chuffed with himself. Run, 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 run. Bog! Let us watch 
as Jeff flies majestically in his portable toilet, propelled by nothing less than his own torrential diarrhoea.